look at something called direct variation. Alexis makes $8 per hour as a Walmart greeter. So the algebra to describe her pay is this. P is equal to 8 times H. Okay, the independent variable here is H. Her pay depends upon how many hours that she works. So let's set up a little t-chart here. We'll put the independent variable first and the dependent variable, which is pay, second. All right, if she works one hour, she's going to make she works eight dollars. two hours, she's going to make six. And if she works three hours, she's going to make twenty-four dollars. Now, this direct variation says that um, as one variable changes, the other variable is going to change in the same way. So let's say, for example, we double the number of hours. Okay. Yeah. So if we double one, we'll get two. What direct variation means is, yeah, since the hours doubled, the pay is going to double. And indeed, it does. It went from 8 to 16. That's called a direct variation. What happens here in the chart? The same thing happens over here. Let's see if it works. What if we triple? If we triple the number of hours, then the pay should get tripled, and it certainly does. We say that P varies directly as H. Okay, so basically what's happening to H is happening to P. All right, let's take a look at another little formula and see if it's a direct variation. All right, here's the formula for the area of a circle. Pi, area is equal to pi times radius squared. Let's keep it simple. Let's, let's examine radiuses of one unit, two units, and three units. Okay, so we're going to take this radius and square it and then multiply it times pi, one squared, time, which is 1. 1 squared is 1 times pi is pi, which is uh, an irrational number. It's a decimal that goes on and on forever. So let's just approximate it to 3.14. In fact, let's do that. We'll go ahead and round all of these to the nearest hundredth. All right, number 2. If the radius is 2, we'll go ahead, we'll take 2, we'll square it, we'll get 4. 4 times pi is going to give us approximately 12.2. Five, six. And 3 squared is 9. 9 times pi is approximately 28.26. Now, let's see if there's a relationship here. Hmm. All right, if we double the radius, this one does not double. It actually Okay, but the radius isn't there by itself. The radius is being squared. So let's see here. Well, by George, by Jingo, here. This is, this is 2. We doubled here, but we're quadrupling here. Oh, which is what 2 squared is. It's a quadruple. Okay, so this is actually um, times 4 bigger when we double over here. Now, let's triple. Let's see what happens when we triple. If we triple the radius, the radius will get three times bigger, but whoa, look at that. To go from 3.14 to 28.26, that is a difference of, I mean, that's nine times bigger, but three to the second power is nine times bigger. So tripling will increase this by the square of three. So. What's happening here is we do have a direct variation, but we say that A varies directly as R All right, so squared. here's the definition. A direct variation function is a function with a formula of the form y equals k times x to the nth with k not equal to zero and n greater than zero. 
Now, K is your constant of variation. That, that is something that is specific to the problem. And you'll see in the examples a lot of different Ks. And the um, constraint here just means we can't have negative. There will not be any negative, nor will there be zero exponents. So there's your formal definition.